Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudobuyo playing vanilla Minecraft 15w46a of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC edition and in this video I'm going to be revisiting my stone generator here. Uh, and uh, the reason why I'm coming back to this is because in the uh, past few weeks there have been a number of changes to the uh, 1.9 snapshots that are going to break a lot of the stuff in my existing 1.8 world. And I thought probably it's not going to be a lot of fun to run around the world trying to fix everything <laughs> that's broken. Uh, and so I would take the opportunity to create a new world when 1.9 is released. And uh, a new world means building lots of stuff. And building lots of stuff means a need for a lot of material. And for me, that means generators like this. Uh, and so I, I went back and I took a look at the uh, took a look at the design for this a little bit. Uh, I made some tweaks, uh, and um, so I thought I'd give uh, another quick tutorial on this um, just to talk about some of the changes. Uh, in order to build something like this, um, you're going to need 76 building blocks. Uh, at least eight of these need to be non-flammable, but um, uh, because I'm playing around with lava, I, I want all of them to be non-flammable. Uh, eight uh, blocks of stone to stock the machine to start, uh, a few slabs, a few signs, and some optional lighting. Um, and now my last design for this uh, relied on a lever. Uh, instead, I'm going to be using a pressure plate here. And the reason why is because um, the, I kept forgetting to turn the machine off with the lever. <laughs> so I'm going to use a pressure plate. Uh, I've got some redstone wiring, uh, five regular pistons, and a sticky piston. Uh, I also need an infinite water source and four lava source blocks. Uh, and to collect the stone as it's mined, uh, I need two hoppers, and I'll talk about why I need two hoppers uh, as I build a machine. Uh, I also need a double chest, and uh, towards the end I will add a feature that requires these two comparators here, but uh, these aren't necessary. Okay, so let's go ahead and get building. And, uh, just, you know, just for fun, I think I'm going to build this in survival mode. Okay, so uh, head uh, up three blocks, and I'm going to, uh, on the fourth layer up here, I'm going to add a platform. Okay, so come out three blocks in each direction from the fourth block up there, so there are three blocks of space. And in each corner, uh, go ahead and fill it so the platform at the top has kind of a diamond shape. Okay. Uh, now you'll note this machine has an orientation. There's a there's a front where I come up and mine the stone, and then there's a back. Uh, so I need to make sure that I, I know uh, where the front and the back is. Um, over here is going to be the kind of the front right corner. Let me head up here. Okay. Time to go ahead and put in some pistons. Uh, uh, now on each tip of the diamond, go ahead and place an inward facing piston. And on the back of each of those pistons, uh, go ahead and place a sign. Now, I'm using signs because I think they look a little bit better, uh, but really you can use any block that can't be moved uh, by a piston, like a furnace or something. Okay, uh, and now I need a block on each side of each piston. Okay, and on the back side of the uh, of the device over here, uh, go ahead and add uh, two redstone torches, one on either side. So one here and one here. Uh, now I need to put in my sticky piston. So on the right side over here, I'm going to put the sticky piston facing upward. And over on top of the other redstone torch, just place a regular block. Okay. Now, on the front, in the front corners over here, here, and here, I need blocks just like this one, uh, but I don't have a torch or anything down there, so I'm just going to stack two blocks. Okay. Now I have a nice little enclosed area. I'm going to go ahead and add my stone in. This is the stone that's going to first come out of the machine. Just place two blocks in front of each piston. And all of these L-shaped repositories here, they need to be filled with water. So I'm going to fill all these with water source blocks. So you place two water source blocks in the corners. The third one becomes a water source block automatically. Okay, there we go. Uh, now uh, on top of each piston, place a block. And build up the hole in the center by another block. 
and on each one of those blocks that I just placed, uh, each one of those eight blocks that I just placed here, uh, go ahead and place a dot of redstone. Now I need to cover up each one of the uh, water repositories here. Okay, and it's time to go ahead and add in the lava. Got four lava source blocks. I need one in each of the outer holes. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and cover up those uh, uh, those lava source blocks uh, by placing a block against the side of this redstone dust. Now, now this um, used to be a lot harder, but in the most recent snapshot. Um, the hitbox of uh, redstone dust was made smaller. Uh, and it used to be that if you missed, <laughs> there was a, a reasonable likelihood that you'd accidentally place a block and destroy the lava source block. Uh, instead, now it's a lot easier. If you miss, you're more likely just to place a block above the redstone dust. Uh, but uh, just place it against the side and it will cover the lava. There's one, two, three, and four. Okay, there we go. And now I need a block in each corner, starting with the sticky piston. This one here, this is uh, the other corner of the back. I'm going to place a block on top of another redstone torch. And over here in the corners in the front, uh, again, I don't have anything here, so I'm just going to stack two blocks. Okay, I'm looking pretty good. Uh, time to add in the repeaters. Um, this is a repeater loop that's going to actually uh, be the clock up here. Uh, and each uh, repeater that goes into a middle block needs to be on one tick, and the repeaters that go into a corner block need to be on two ticks. So one tick, two ticks, one tick, two ticks, one tick, and two ticks. Okay. Uh, now a block goes in the middle, and I'm going to use the same trick, placing it against the side of the redstone. And on top of that block, I'm going to add a torch. Uh, this is uh, just optional lighting. Of course, you can light this any way that you want, but a single torch up here will light all blocks on the top here, including the ones uh, down on the side to a light level of eight or greater, so uh, there will be no mob spawning. Okay, I'm done up here. Reclaim these blocks here. Okay, now this is the center. If I look straight up, I'm going to take this block back, and up there is the block that I just placed with the torch on top. I need to place my last piston facing downward against that block. Okay. Now, uh, this is the back over here, and this is the front over here. From the center, skip one, block, uh, skip one space and place a block, and skip one space and place a block. So this is the front over here. Um, in front of this block on either side, place a block. And in front of this block on either side, place a block. Now it's time to add in the collection point. Uh, there's a double chest right here. And I need my uh, hoppers going into the chest. First one goes into the chest over here. This is directly under the, under the center of the, um, uh, of the platform there. And the other hopper has to go into this hopper facing down. Now, the reason why I have two hoppers uh, is because uh, hoppers have a cooldown uh, cool period of four redstone ticks. And this machine is capable of producing and allowing you to mine stone faster than, <laughs> faster than that. So the two hoppers um, have, uh, have a higher transfer rate because this one pushes at the same time this one pulls. So they transfer two items per, uh, uh, per four redstone ticks. Uh, that means that um, these, uh, this uh, hopper uh, stack here can keep up with um, uh, blocks being produced faster than point, uh, point 0.4 seconds. Uh, now, the, the overall transfer rate is, um, is greater than 0.4 seconds because there's some irregularity with respect to the, uh, the production of stone here. But sometimes there are two blocks that can be, uh, can be mined uh, faster than uh, 0.4 seconds apart. Uh, if you have a diamond pickaxe with efficiency three or higher, so um, these two uh, these two guys are necessary if you have that kind of a pickaxe. Uh, 
and um, and that's why I have two hoppers here. So uh, now what? Uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to be standing right here. There's going to be a pressure plate right here. Uh, I'm not going to put that in quite yet, but uh, let's go ahead and add some redstone. So I need a little redstone wire going to a repeater over here. This redstone wire is going to be powered by um, this block, which gets powered by the uh, pressure plate. Uh, the repeater strongly powers this block, which is going to power this redstone dust, which will weakly power this block, which will depower this redstone torch. Okay, now place two blocks on top of those here at the back. Now at the same time this, red st this uh, repeater powers this block and this redstone dust, I needed to power redstone dust up here. And this redstone dust is going to weakly power this block when the pressure plate is active. Uh, and when this block is powered, it is going to depower a redstone torch that I place on top of here, uh, which will allow this redstone torch to be powered, which will uh, cause the sticky piston to push that block up there. That block is the one that allows the, the, clock, uh, the clock circuit up there to complete. Uh, so when the uh, pressure plate is not active, um, this is uh, this, all this redstone dust here is unpowered. This redstone torch here would be powered, uh, which would depower this and cause this block to come down, breaking the circuit. So when I add this torch, the piston will, will retract. There we go. Now the clock circuit is uh, is broken up there. Okay, and uh, uh, these two redstone dust uh, are going to be powered at the same time. When this repeater is powered, that means these two blocks are going to be weakly powered at the same time. Uh, I have a three tick repeater here that is going to be powered at the same time this redstone torch is depowered. Uh, that means that this block here will be receiving a one tick off pulse when the pressure plate is activated. And this torch here will be receiving a one tick on pulse, one tick off pulse, and way up there, a one tick on pulse when the pressure plate is activated, which is what starts the clock up there at the same time this piston goes up to complete the circuit. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add in the pressure plate, and I'm going to put in a little step there, and I'm going to add half slabs all the way around the pressure plate. These are just to make sure that I'm kind of locked in position while I'm mining. And uh, everything is operational now. The machine is ready to go. I can mine, uh, just continue to mine stone. Uh, and now what I would do here is uh, I would usually have a, uh, a diamond pickaxe with um, uh, unbreaking, two, uh, uh, unbreaking two or three on it. And I would just uh, come up here and I would AFK until, this double, until a double chest was filled. And when I had more than one double chest, if I had more hoppers, you know, kind of a line of hoppers leading into a line of chests, uh, what would happen is I would forget to come back uh, and I would find either that my pick had broken or that I would have died from hunger <laughs> because I was playing in hard mode uh, and I had just uh, allowed myself to deplete my hunger, uh, my hunger bar there. Uh, by continuously mining. So I, I thought that if I um, was able to limit myself to a double chest, uh, that would be a lot better. And so I got rid of all the additional chests that I had in my previous design. Uh, and uh, instead, um, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to allow this machine to shut off when this double chest is filled. When, uh, when the machine shuts off and I'm standing up here and I mine this last block, nothing else comes down. Uh, and so I'm no longer trying to mine blocks uh, when, the, uh, when the mouse button is down. And so behind this chest, next to the hopper, I'm going to be placing a comparator. Uh, first, I'm going to get rid of this redstone dust right here, going to the repeater. Let's go ahead and add in that comparator right there. That is going to measure signal state. Uh, coming out of the chest, and when the chest is full, this is producing a, a um, signal of 15. And I'm going to add in a comparator here. Uh, this comparator is going to be receiving a single signal of 15 when the pressure plate is activated. So if I put this into subtract mode, uh, now um, this signal of 15 minus the signal coming from the chest will only be zero when the chest is full, uh, and that will turn off this comparator. It will prevent this comparator for, uh, from allowing signal through, and that will turn off the device uh, when the chest is full. So the, um, uh, the uh, um, generator is active when I'm on the pressure plate 
and when the chest is not full. Otherwise, it's off. And so if I'm uh, mining here, uh, then uh, and the uh, chest is full, it will shut off, and basically there's nothing to mine. So I'll, I'll just stand here, and and uh, <laughs> my my player will just stand there and wait for me to come and uh, stop AFKing, rather than uh, killing myself by uh, depleting my hunger. So uh, that is it. Then I think um, the only th other thing that I would do here is just go ahead and and light this up. But uh, of course, you can do this any way that you want. Uh, and that's it. Uh, now I've got a complete replica here of what's over there. It's not very hard to build, doesn't require a whole lot of materials, uh, and it's pretty good for in games, uh, the, the beginning of a uh, beginning of a new game. So uh, that's it then for this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments. And thanks very much for watching.